Assalamu alaikum. This is the presentation for medical students by Dr. Mutaz Ahmed Umar and today's topic is oral ulcers. Ulcer is basically a defect or a break in the continuity of epithelial component of a skin or mucosa. Mouth ulcers are painful areas in the mouth and gums with exposure of the underlying connective tissue. So these are the ulcers in the lower lip and the cheek. There are many causes of the oral ulcers which include infections, immune disorders, trauma, neoplasms, skin disorders, blood disorders, drug allergy, vitamins deficiency or some miscellaneous causes. Infections. Infections can be viral, bacterial or fungal. The viral one include the herpangina which is a Coxsackie viral infection mostly affecting the children. To begin with, multiple small vesicles they appear on the fascial pillars, tonsils, soft palate and uvula. They rupture to form small ulcers which are usually 2 to 4 mm in size, having a yellow base and a red areola around them. They seldom persist for more than one week and symptoms like fever, headache, sore throat and lymph adenopathy can occur. So these are the small ulcers which are present here in the soft palate here also the hard palate is involved the second is herpetic gingivus rheumatitis also known as orolabial herpes it is caused by herpes simplex virus and is of two types primary and secondary primary infection affects children and is characterized by clusters of multiple vesicles which soon rupture to form ulcers. Any part of the oral cavity may be affected. Constitutional symptoms like fever, malaise and headache may accompany sore throat and left adenopathy. Secondary or recurrent herpes it chiefly affects the adults. It is milder in form as adults have strong immunity and they have already sometimes immunized to this virus. Most commonly, it involves the vermilion border of the lip, but less often lesions appear intraorally on the heart palate and gingiva. Precipitating factors include emotional stress, fatigue, fever, pregnancy, or immune deficiency states. Treatment is mostly symptomatic, and antiviral therapy can be prescribed. Hand, foot, and mouth disease. It is also a viral infection affecting children. Oral lesions are seen on the palate, tongue and buccal mucosa which appear similar to herpetic gingivus stomatitis. Vesicles however also develop on the skin of hand, feet and sometimes buttock. So this is the picture showing the herpetic gingivus stomatitis in the lower lip. And these are different pictures for the head, foot and mouth disease. So now the bacterial infections. The most important is the Vincent infection. It is also known as acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. It is similar to the Vincent angina which produces a patch or ulcer on the tonsil. The causative organism is a fusiform bacillus which is a spirochete Borrelia vincenti. Young, more often the disease affects the young adults and the middle aged person. It starts at the interdental papillae and then spreads to the three margins of the gingiva which can covered with necrotic club. Gingiva also become red and edematous. Similar, uh, similar ulcer and necrotic membrane may also form over the tonsil which is then known as Vincent angina. Diagnosis is made for diagnosis, complete blood count should be carried out to look for the uh, cells and then the peripheral smear from the affected area. Treatment Treatment includes the systemic antibiotics, especially the penicillin or erythromycin along with metronidazole, frequent mouthwashes and special attention to the dental hygiene. Other specific bacterial infections like tuberculosis, syphilis and actinomycosis, they may present as a chronic ulcer. So this is the picture which is showing 
the ulcer and Vincent angina on the tonsil, which is bleeding from one ward, and this is the interdental papillae and the gingiva, which is all covered with swollen red and necrotic fluff is there. Fungal infection include the moniliasis or oral candidiasis. It is caused by the organism known as Candida albicans. It occurs in two forms, oral thrush and chronic hypertrophic candidiasis. The thrush appears as white gray patches on the oral mucosa and tongue and when it is wiped off they leave an erythematous mucosa. The condition is often seen in infants and children and adults who are affected when they are suffering especially from any systemic malignancy and diabetes or taking broad spectrum antibiotics for long or any other cytotoxic drug on steroids and radiation. In chronic hypertrophic candidiasis, it is also known as candidial leukoplakia. The lesion appears as white patch which cannot be wiped off, mostly affects the anterior buccal mucosa just behind the angle of mouth. Thrush can be treated by topical application of nystatin which comes in the form of drops and the hypertrophic form it usually requires excisional surgery. Immune disorders they include the abscess ulcers. Abscess ulcers are recurrent and superficial usually involving the movable mucosa like the inner surfaces of the lips, buccal mucosa, tongue, floor of mouth and soft palate while sparing the mucosa of the heart palate and gingiva. In minor form which is the more common ulcers are 2 to 10 mm in size and multiple with a central necrotic area and a red halo. They heal in about two weeks without leaving any scar. While the major form, the ulcer become very big around two to four centimeter in size and it usually heals with a scar and soon followed by an other ulcer. Etiology of Ethel's ulcer is unknown, but it may be considered to be an autoimmune process, nutritional deficiency, viral or bacterial infection, food allergies, or any due to any hormonal changes or stress. Aphthous ulcers can be differentiated from viral ulcers by their frequent recurrence, involvement of movable mucosa on the soft palate or cheek, and absence of constitutional symptoms like fever, malaise, and enlargement of cervical nodes. The treatment it consists of topical application of steroids and cauterization with 10% silver nitrate. However, in severe cases, 250 mg of tetracycline dissolved in 50 ml of water is given as mouth rinses and then to be swallowed 4 times a day. Local pain can be relieved with lignocaine viscous or ointments. So, these are the pictures showing the big aphthous ulcer in the right side and the left these are multiple ulcers visible. Bechet syndrome or oculorogenital syndrome. There are triad of symptoms of aphthous like ulcers in the oral cavity, genital ulcerations and uveitis. The edge of the ulcer is characteristically punched out. There may also be lesions in the skin, joints and central nervous system. So these are the different areas they involve. Trauma. The traumatic ulcer is usually occur on the lateral border of tongue due to jagged tooth or ill-fitting denture on the buccal mucosa due to cheek bites and on the palate due to injury with a foreign object such as pencil or toothbrush. Similarly, acute ulcerative lesions of the oral cavity and oropharyngeal mucosa can also result from accidental ingestion of acids or alkalis or hot fluids. Aspirin burns is also seen in the buccal sulcus when a tablet of aspirin is kept against a painful tooth to, tooth to get relief from the toothache. So this is a picture of an oral ulcer, tongue ulcer on the lateral border of the tongue, most likely due to the jack teeth, but now it don't look very healthy and it is simulating a carcinoma. So how to rule out carcinoma? We need to take biopsy. Neoplasms. Malignancies of the oral cavity or oropharynx may present as a chronic ulcer and most commonly it is of squamous cell variety. 
Many skin disorders, they can also present with oral ulceration. The number one is the erythema multiform. It is a disease which involves the skin and the mucous membranes. It is a disease of rapid onset. Oral mucosal lesions consist of vesicles or bullae which soon rupture to form the ulcers and is usually covered with the pseudo membrane. The lesions, they bleed easily. The etiology is unknown but may be associated with drug allergy like sulfonamide or recent, uh, recent herpes simplex infection. Any area of the oral mucosa is involved but the common sites are the lips, buccal mucosa and tongue. The distinctive feature is to form the hemorrhagic crest on the lips. Skin lesions consist of the erythematous patch on the palms, soles and extended surfaces of the extremities. Oral lesions may occur without skin involvement in 20% of the cases. The disease is self-limiting and the management is mainly supportive. Steroids can be used to treat the severe form. Other is the pemphigus vulgaris. It is an autoimmune disorder affecting older age group from 50 to 70 years. Oral lesions are seen in 50% of the cases and may precede the skin lesions. Oral ulcerations are superficial and involve the palate, buccal mucosa and tongue. Treatment consists of systemic steroids and cytotoxic drugs. Third one is the B9 mucous membrane pemphigoid. It is an autoimmune disorder. Mucous lesions involve cheek, gingiva and palate. Conjunctiva is the next important site. Lesions usually start as a bulla filled with clear or hemorrhagic fluid which ruptures to form the superficial ulceration covered with the shaggy collapsed mucosa. Skin lesions may be absent. Treatment consists of steroids. So this is the picture for the B9 for pemphigus vulgaris and B9 mucous membrane pemphigoid. Lichen planus. Oral lesions are seen with or without skin lesions. Skin lesions are puritic, means they itch purple polygonal papules. They are seen on the forearm and medial side of the thigh. Oral lesions occur in two forms, the reticular form or the erosive form. The reticular form is consists of the white stria forming lace-like pattern on the buccal mucosa on both sides. They are asymptomatic and require no treatment. However, the erosive form it is characterized by the painful ulceration on the buccal mucosa, gingiva or lateral tongue. Each ulcer is correct, uh, surrounded by a keratotic periphery. Treatment consists of topical steroids. Chronic discoid lupus erythematosus. Oral lesions are almost always associated with skin lesions. Previous conditions, they may present only with the oral lesions without any skin involvement. But in uh, chronic DLE, the oral lesions are almost always associated with skin lesions and similar to those of erosive forms of lichen planus. Like in SLE, the butterfly rash, DLE also present with the same butterfly rash. Blood disorders. Blood discrasis causes ulceration in the oral cavity and pharynx. Conditions like acute leukemia, agranulocytosis, neutropenia, pancytopenia, they all can present with oral ulcerations due to lack of defense mechanism. Infections, it quickly supervenes, leading to ulcers. So, to diagnose these conditions, investigations has to be done, which can uh, include complete blood count, peripheral film, and bone marrow aspiration. Drug allergy Systemic administration of drugs like penicillin, tetracycline, sulfur drugs, barbiturates, etc., may cause erosive vesicular or bullous lesions in the oral cavity. Contact stomatitis may occur due to local reaction to mouthwashes, lozenges, chewing gums, toothpaste or to prosthetic dental materials. Oral lesions may vary from erythema to vesicles and bulla formation. Vitamins deficiencies
especially vitamin B12 and folic acid deficiency may present with oral ulceration. The miscellaneous conditions it includes the radiation mucositis. It follows radiation of the oral cavity or oropharynx for cancer. At first, the mucosa it becomes red and then forms spotty areas of mucositis which coalesce to form large ulcerated areas covered by slough. Then mucositis of the cancer chemotherapy, especially from the drugs like methotrexate, 5-fluorouracil and bleomycin. It manifests as erythema, edema and ulceration. Thank you.